Hi everybody, today we're gonna talk about Eon XR and uh, how virtual and augmented reality can help your organization to uh, improve knowledge transfer um, in general, both for academic institutions as well as industries. Uh, Eon has a 21 years experience in this field and we have worked over the decades with more than 500 academic institutions, many governments, and also enterprises. But let's start with a problem. So virtual reality has recently, in the last five years, uh, increased in usage because of the arrival of new devices. Uh, so as of recent, if we take, for example, education areas, 28% of the higher education institutions have already engaged in some level with VR. Uh, and AR. But here's the striking figure, 82%, 82% have not yet moved beyond the pilot stages. And uh, we started asking ourselves this question already five years ago, how come, given the technology is so good, it has so many benefits, only so few are taking advantage of it. And today, not only will we learn why that is, but we're also going to learn what the solution is, because solution is here today. And I would say, let's start with the problem. I'm an engineer, so I'm interested in problem solving. Uh, on the left side, you see the hardware. So hardware for VR, whether it's headset, AR glasses, screens, environments, have traditionally been quite expensive, not easy to use, uh, sometimes quite cumbersome. Um, and uh, Let's face it also, the sales, initial sales of VR and AR devices initially disappointed that we started 2017. So the way we have addressed this issue uh, at Eon is to have a total agnostic platform that enables you to use either uh, devices like AR, VR, but also use your phone any phone, smartphone, or a tablet, as well as screens and desktop. So circumventing the problem that way. There are 4 billion mobile devices, so everybody has a VR device in their pocket today. Now, if you look at the other three significant pro uh, problems related to content, uh, you can see there is a lack of good relevant content historically. And I'll share with you how we address that. Lack of easy way to create new content and lack of good use cases for that content to prove it valuable. So I think uh, that's what E.ON has tackled for the last few years. And uh, we are launching a, a new version of our platform in September this year. We call E.ON XR. XR stands for Mobile Reality, Virtual Reality, Augmented Reality. And fundamentally, it basically stands on the three legs that we've worked with the last five years. And I'll share the history a little bit with you, and I'll tell you also where we are now taking this to new levels. So get ready. It's going to go pretty fast. Um, I'll go through a number of slides. And if you have more questions or something goes too fast, feel free to reach out to us. So I'll start with the basic platform. Uh, this platform was developed um, agnostic, as I already said, works on a desktop or a mobile device, uh, and enables you to experience things even on the phone in virtual reality, augmented reality, as well as mobile reality. So you see the virtual reality in that uh, image there. You can use the, the card box or a little bit more sophisticated headset. Um, and you interact through gaze. This is also connected with a big library of different assets. Um, but you can also switch from that to what we refer to as mobile reality, where you use your fingers and pinch. And then you can move on to augmented reality that you can do from an object environment to large environments. The library that I was pointing out to contains now more than 1 million 3D assets, to my knowledge, the world's largest library for learning in respect to assets, and a very easy to use uh, interface that you see that's more simple than PowerPoint. So once you learned, uh, you want, of course, to train. So the same application uh, platform that we use for learning is now extended to training. And in this environment, you can either use a headset uh, and communicate. You can be remotely. 
especially today during the pandemic ed tech explosion, the ability to do hands-on uh, environment training for nursing, for mechanical engineering, uh, or what have you, in big groups over distance with voice over IP communication, uh, and now allows you to do procedure, practice, remote training, but also everything you do in this environment will extend to assessment, so what we call virtual certification or authentic certification. Now, once you learned and you trained, the next step is to perform. And we have developed this augmented reality-based uh, assistance or knowledge transfer injection. So you get the knowledge that you learned and trained for uh, at your fingertips when you perform. So procedure practice, uh, remote expert assistance, um, or other type of visual instructions. So that may sound a bit theoretical, so why don't we go in the actual applications. So we'll start with a desktop application. So here's the, today we called AVR platform, and the new name from September moving forward will be Eon XR. So here you recognize the different steps, the creator, the trainer part, the augmented reality assistance, but you also see a fourth choice, which has to do with the vault. And the vault is, you can see it here, think about it as a big library of pre-existing applications in different segments, whether it's education uh, or it's energy-related application or industry-related application, whether it's augmented reality or virtual reality. So, and for each application that you select, let's uh, go for education, for example, and go for medical. So if I'm selecting an application here, let's take this one, for example, you can see that there is a, a link to an application. A lot of these applications have not been created by ourselves, but people that we've engaged with, often tie academic institutions, and they can be made accessible for you. Uh, as a part of a relation or partnership. Now, in the event that you don't find what you need, you can also create your own application for virtual reality or augmented reality. You can see there are 3D or 360. Today I'm going to focus on 3D. Uh, you can import data if you wish to do that, if you have CAD data or other type of MRI data or other type of 3D data, scan data. Or if you don't have, which the majority of our partners or customers don't have such data, they can browse to a pre-existing library that contains thousands and thousands of assets. So let's say I'm interested in the medical arena. I can click here and I can find 3D assets around uh, COVID-19, medical ventilators, uh, instruments, ambulances, hospital rooms, uh, many, many things. I can be also very precise and just look for a hospital, for example. And the benefit of this is that you save a lot of time and effort by having those, uh, because it takes a lot of time to do modeling. So this is one advantage. So let's say I go into my workspace and I pick one asset. Let's say I pick this hospital environment. So here I can see a lesson that I started with. Within this environment, you can do a lot of things. You can identify, you can um, record 3D environments, you can introduce people to it. I'm not going to, in interest of your time, I'm not going to show you everything now, uh, but I can do one simple example here. Let's see a recording. I delete what it is there. I record a new one. So this translates text to speech. So uh, let's see, test. So I say test of hospital consists so and so. I select the voice. I'll stick to Matthew. I synthesize the environment information. I play. Test of hospitals consist of departments. Tradition test of hospitals. So then I can click on that. Or if I'm not satisfied, I can go back and try again. But now I can switch, for example, different languages Arabic, English, Chinese, Dutch, and many, many other type of languages. So this type of memos I can put as voice in different locations. Um, I can then also record, for example, let's say I want to do a 3D recording. 
and this environment, I can do that if I wish. So there's many things that uh, I, time doesn't allow. If you're interested in this and you want to learn more, let me just, the reason it will know me is there. Okay, cancel. And I go to three recording. Um, and then I delete that recording. And now I create my own recording here. Hello, today I'm going to do a little test and explain why, how you can use a ventilator to save the life of four patients versus one by simply reconfiguring it. And let me show you the different areas here and etc. etc. So this could be a step-by-step -step procedure or what have you. So now our plate. Hello, today I'm going to do a little test and explain why, how you can use a ventilator to save the life of four patients versus one by simply reconfiguring. And once I'm done with this, I can click on save and then I have my lesson. So let's say I have my lesson and I want to apply it and somehow, how do I do that? Um, I mean, you can apply it obviously to a headset, you can apply it to a desktop screen, <clears throat> you can apply it to a phone, and I'll start with a phone. This is because you can do quite a lot of cool things if you have your phone available. Let me just share that with you. Uh, so now, let's see, one second. Yeah, it takes a little while to link. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. So you should be able to see my phone screen momentarily. Yeah, you see it. And then I'm going to the Creator AVR app. And this is uh, something you can download today from uh, or from on your phone. You can go to Google Store. Um, let's put hospital. Okay, hospital for COVID-19. So here you see something interesting. You can either start an application or collaborate. If I click, or I can also download it. You can see here. So here is download, and I don't, don't have to have it in the cloud. Here is start the lesson, and here is collaborate. Collaborate, I'll show you later, will enable multiple people to be in the same environment. Um, and you can be in the same environment, let's say, in augmented reality. For example, 30 nurses in this hospital room that then can talk with each other, like you do in Zoom, uh, with voice of IP, but interact in that, be hands-on in that uh, hospital or what have you. Other things you can do on mobile that it's not easy to do on desktop is you can convert this phone into a virtual reality device. So you can see here, here is AR conversion, this is VR, and this is the mobile mode. So now I'm manipulating this. And you can do a number of things. You can grasp things, you can show annotations, you have a whole lesson scenario, etc. But now for simplicity, I'm going to go directly to AR. So now you can see my hand here, left, uh, and I touch the surface, and I want to go to, let's say, the medical ventilator. There's my medical ventilator. I'll turn on the annotations. I can rotate it. I can see how it fits in the context of the bed. So now I have the whole medical bed, but I want to make it a little bit bigger, so I can put it life-size. Oops, it's pretty, a little bit too big, sorry. I'll pinch it right, rotate it, and there you can see what I'm in. Now, in this environment, I can move forward. I can go, for example, to the patient monitor, the IV, uh, and I can interact with any aspect of this. I can also do something else. If I want to see more context, let's see, I put it here, and now I'll turn it around, and I'm looking at the whole hospital room again. But now I'm going to dive into this hospital room. Uh, so one yard in reality is one yard in this augmented environment. So now I'm there. And now I can walk it. I walk around. I can look at different things. I'm totally immersed in this environment. Although if I put on x-ray vision, I will be able to see through where I, I am at the moment. So it's a very convenient way of applying the technology in this way. So that's it. Let's go back. Stop there. 
So in conclusion, with this platform, you can either uh, access the platform and get what we call an easy way of creating and consuming knowledge-related um, content. It's effortless to, to do. It's affordable. It's self-service, meaning that it's aimed for the users to develop it. It is interconnected between virtual and augmented reality, and it has access to many more assets. Now we passed a million. Or you can make it comfortable and choose the Vault, and the Vault has more advanced, complete application that address specific needs. So now, with the latest release of Eon XR, we see a lot of new, exciting expansion of the feature. So this is the mobile mode expansion related to the ability to have, for example, a tablet on the left side versus a mobile on the right side. And these can collaborate, and you can see here there is a presenter, uh, and they discuss various topics in this, uh, and they can manipulate and they can collaborate in this very simple way. Now this can be extended to uh, multiple users uh, in an environment. So here you see an example of that. So here you have two users interacting with a Neolithic village. Um, and here you see someone working and showing to other participants how to disassemble this uh, specific engine. I think it's an aircraft engine, maybe it's a GE, General Electric, uh, turbofan. And you can see who it is and you can see that uh, that person is uh, interacting uh, real time. Um, and here you see uh, a biology application where the, you can see that the manipulation happens through the phone. So they can hold the phone and have full freedom and look through it as you look through a binocular in order to interact. It's a very engaging, very fun, but also a way to collaborate that is uh, almost unheard of for educational purposes. And the best part, it works on your phone. Uh, you can also do things like multiple 3D recordings. Uh, you can do a 360 environment that then links to uh, a 3D object. You can also do something very exciting, which is the ability to have a teacher recording an assessment procedure, let's say how to replace the generator on this engine. And that uh, recording then translates into a step-by-step -step instruction automatically. Uh, and then the student can perform, watch the right procedure, perform the same step-by-step uh, -step herself. And then uh, once she's ready, she can do an assessment and then the system will automatically see here that she has 82% completion, no missed or unnecessary steps. Uh, so this really generates an authentic assession, uh, assessment very quickly. Another very interesting new feature is the ability to populate the various memos automatically. So if you remember, I showed you just a few minutes ago how you could put text into sub-components or components of a VRAR application. Now, instead of doing that manually, the system now is in, connects with uh, Google, Wikipedia, and in this case, I was trying to do a lesson about the mirror station, and I'm more interested in a sub-component called Spectre. I don't know what Spectre is, the system automatically identifies the Spectre is a fifth module of the mirror station and, and I can get information what it is, how it works, why it's working. So this become not only a way to very fast encapsulate knowledge to populate the link between the visual information, the text information, and the voice information, but also a way to cons easier be able to, let's say, explore uh, information about something that a teacher may not have thought about, like fun facts or other type of data. Now, of course, if you have a higher level device, like a Magic Leap or, for example, a... Welcome again to the AVR platform, now available on Magic Leap. Yes, this quick start video like a Magic Leap, you, you have the ability to do more because you have, you can move your hands, you can interact with different aspects of things. Uh, you can uh, interact uh, also in a more intuitive way. But it's, um, it's the same application that you created for the phone that then extends to, to uh, everything from a headset to a dome.
One is specifically interesting area that is that I find is to take what I showed you for a, se a second ago for a hospital and take you in the area of full life size. So you can take a launch pad, put it on a football field and then make it as real as a big as it is in reality and then interact with it uh, in a way that you can do multiple people being together in this space without any risk for physical exposure. So that's something that's quite exciting. And this doesn't limit itself uh, to, you know, technical environment, factories, hospitals. In this case, you can see that we took a, a very famous mosque in Istanbul and we extended it so you can um, walk physically in this environment uh, as if you were there, but in fact you're not there, you are in uh, Laguna Beach in California in this case, or wherever you are located. Um, and this of course, things like space uh, environments, this is the Apollo 11th capsule, or if you look at agriculture, this is a cultivation of um, different type of trees in a botanical garden, uh, in Morocco, but this is, happens to be a British, uh, UK-based tree. But you, you have that flexibility of uh, mixing real and digital. A very practical example of what we call the digital twin, you can see here. So here I have uh, an electronic circuit that I have uh, built in augmented reality. And then you can also create a step-by-step -step procedure like I showed you with the engine uh, for different things. And then you have the parts you can then combine, uh, use the augmented reality digital twin to guide you how to install the physical environment. So this is a example that then can extend, for example, in nursing to um, how to apply a needle. So uh, nurses that learn about that, uh, this is a, is a, it's a bridge between, I would say, the, a video and a hands-on experience. Uh, sometimes you want to have super realistic environments uh, that perhaps are not as interactive. A good way to achieve that is use the 360 uh, videos and 360 3D lessons that you can create in Eon. So Eon allows you to combine a 360 image with quizzes, in voice information, 360, etc. to create that rich experience. We currently have uh, almost, uh, I think, 1,000 uh, World Heritage environments. But 360 is also proven to be very effective in a factory environment when you have a specific process or operation room or you want to teach on someone in a contextual manner. And there you can mix the 3D image with 360 video, with text, with uh, 3D components, have that rich uh, learning enabled. Um, you can also go life-size on a full ship in the water. Uh, a lot of labs, we see a lot of success in the lab environments. And frankly speaking, no, I don't think any university today can afford to buy all the equipment. Uh, an engine can cost $42 million for an aircraft. Uh, an MRI device can cost you tens, uh, five million or more. Uh, CNC machines and others. But you can have them all at your fingertips by using the, our platform and our rich library. And then someone asks, yes, by my phone, how can I interact? Because I'm not having any, uh, you know, nothing to hold in my hands. But the phone itself becomes uh, an uh, interaction modality using the axiometer. So this little green one that you see now allows me to interact uh, in a way uh, with the content very fluently. Uh, and of course, everything you do in one environment on the phone, you can then extend to the headset. So you do it first on the phone and then you do it the same thing on a headset. Now, okay, so how has the pandemic affected us? I would say there's been a, a big explosion. I, I call it the pandemic uh, edtech explosion. I mean, the uh, situation is, as we all know, that almost 1.6 billion learners for a while were totally stranded. And uh, a lot of partners and customers reached out to us and asked us to help. So we came up with this global emergency initiative and a partnership that allows us to co-invest with our partners uh, and with our customers actually in deploying this solution. There are two legs on this. One is called the Remote AVR Program and the other one is called the Self-Directed Learning. I will 
briefly share this on a very high level. But let's start with a concrete example. So here's a European Thank university very much for, for your time and, uh... that partnered with us in November and uh, they uh, are building a physical center to use this technology. And obviously what happened was that uh, because of the pandemic, uh, the physical center had to close and then we had to continue online. So this actually was a blessing in many ways because as you can see, when we started in the physical environment, we had uh, 689 users initially or planning for the physical environment. And then when, during March, when we start going online, you can see that we got this spike of uh, almost 7,400 users. And if you can see the 3D assets, we have a similar spike on the creation of 3D assets. And how is that possible? How can a, a partner create so many assets and have so many students engaged? And this is what I'll be focusing on the rest of the presentation. And this is what I hope we can do together. Now, with regards to the first step is to choose the programs. So we have, together with the academic institutions, selected uh, 16 bachelor programs and eight. And those are areas where virtual and augmented reality can make a big difference. Mechatronics, health science, agriculture, um, architecture, electricity, energy, media, communication, construction, etc. So we selected those programs and then we rolled it out in a special way. And we did it there and we did it in other locations also. So this became very soon a global movement because when we started in the beginning of the year to prepare for the new platform, we unveiled it in 114 countries. We traveled ourselves to more than half of them. I covered about 19. And the physical partnership slowly but surely ex extended and evolved also to the virtual site. So let's start with some examples. This is United States. Today, technology designed for its students to make breakthroughs in the clinical field. Mason Morrow has the story. Augmented reality, virtual reality, the way of the future, the way of Nebraska medicine. We believe that augmented and virtual reality are going to change the world, not only in the world of healthcare, education, but in the world of clinical care. University of Nebraska Medical Center became just the 15th eon reality. Just today. So this happened around the world. Uh, of course, U.S. Uh, was one area, places like uh, Canada. An interesting time, but this is the avionics department that had an, all their crafts and then they migrated to virtual reality and they were able to work with the latest aircrafts and do also fault analysis and other things. And of course, uh, as a part of the global movement, we also signed a big partnership in India, uh, in Spain, in uh, Switzerland, uh, places like North Africa, Morocco, Japan, Malaysia, uh, China, multiple locations there, uh, and, and also places like Italy. Um, so what we did with these partnerships during the pandemic is we acknowledged the fact that schools are closed acknowledge the fact that traditional online, uh, there's two issues there. One, of course, that students tend to be less active and, and perhaps less engaged. Um, there are studies showing that after six minutes on online video, students tune out. But be beyond the fact that they may not be engaged, uh, the bigger issue is that we, we address is the ability to do hands-on learning uh, through this solution or gather large groups and interact virtually without risk for physical exposure or have access to massive amount of laboratories that you can interact and engage with, as well as the authentic assessment I showed you earlier and the self-directed learning. And I'm going to deep dive a little bit on the last one because it's, it, that's quite interesting. So the idea is that uh, in this remote environment, you connect uh, a session with your phone and then you start interactive naturally in this environment. You can also work with physical and virtual. So you can have your digital twin, like you see here, to do uh, interacting between the physical and virtual. Um, 
And the self-directed learning is very exciting. It's based on the belief that students learn better to active and participatory learning. Uh, and it's based on guidelines developed by University of New South Wales, uh, used by schools as MIT and other. And what the principle with this is to develop the 21st century critical skills uh, and where enable students to explore, question, react, and respond in a cooperative manner. So there's a nine-step approach, and this is the approach that allowed University of Business Technology to get that hockey stick that you showed earlier in terms of users and content development. So the first step is to identify the lecturers and the programs. Then they have to identify the students, let's say 3,000 students, that could be a good way to start. Then we are responsible to host a series of workshops, both to see how this works and train and teach the students and the teachers how to use it on a desktop, how to use it on a, a mobile device. And then once that is done, teacher will outline with our guidance uh, the learning outcomes so each student can create 10 lessons applications um, on specific topics that they would learn within that semester. So these are not, um, let's say, uh, extracurriculum activities. Th this is part of the curriculum itself, like a laboratory or like a sandbox for them to explore and learn and collaborate. We give them uh, some guidelines. These have been developed by Dr. Peter Looker. He uh, is our chief learning officer, and previously he was running NTU's learning, so head of learning for NTU, the number one ranked university in Asia, and I think they are number among the top 12 in, in the world. Um, and as a part of this, the students also have to publish and share uh, applications that they created, and they get reviewed by peers, they get reviewed by statistics, uh, and then we evaluate them. Uh, so, uh, and then finally, uh, the students have to explain and present to each other and they will be asked how successful the lesson is uh, and uh, as a part of the final step, nine step, we get 10 lessons per, for 3,000 students, which is 30,000 applications or lessons. And of course, the best ones can be incorporated as a part of the next semester. So in conclusion, although 2020 has been a very unusual year, it's been a big step forward for EduTech in general, and I would say virtual and augmented reality in specifically. And within the virtual and augmented reality, we see that there it's we've been moving through this pandemic from a nice to have innovative future solution to something of a mainstream that uh, many organizations want to deploy campus-wide, so every student or close to every student. So I thank you for that introduction. Now, I know at this point, uh, if you are interested to learn more, you're welcome to reach out to us. And then I also get the question, yes, Eon wants to partner, but what does that mean practically and how do we normally typically partner? So a partnership can entail different um, levels. It can be very modest uh, from, uh, let's say, a tactical way of uh, doing a proof of concept where Eon can perhaps co-invest a little bit if the topics are relevant and interested. But it can be also very large, uh, can be a strategic relation. And I'll give you an example of this. I'll give you two examples. This is uh, when we go to target a region-wide or campus-wide uh, partnership. So it's not limited to one. Uh, so one example of that comes from Europe. Uh, in this case, we have a partnership with in Bologna, uh, and it's a partnership with the University of Bologna and the local government and local industry. Uh, the facility, physical facility, is pretty large and spacious, 30,000 square feet. But there is also a big and increasingly big footprint online with, uh, I think initially we had about six, 7,000 students, but this has grown uh, exponential. Uh, and the center, the physical center role historically was to create awareness, understanding, and belief around these technologies, uh, and, and, but also to be able to disseminate in a sustainable way this technology for the universities uh, as well as for the partners. Uh, and ideally, the type of relation we seek in this case is what you're seeing here. Uh, so this is the 
director for the university, the president. This is the minister of the region for economy. Uh, this, this is myself, uh, the governor, mayor, and industry-related partners. So it's a tight relation between industry, uh, academia, and government. Um, and also, uh, so this is something we would really hope to discuss more. I mean, obviously, first we need to understand your needs. Last example is from Singapore, from NTU University. It's have those foundational skills training are the need to, to uh, ensure our students have those foundational skills uh, and they need to be able to practice in a safe space um, and, and the way of doing that in a realistic environment is using AR and VR technology. Yeah, so uh, this is also an example where we had uh, E.ON invested in a big center uh, almost 20 plus million and uh, the partners invested 25% which they received uh, support from the government. Uh, we are doing similar partnerships that where E.ON co-invests with, for example, Los Angeles Community College here in, uh, in LA uh, and similar partnership now coming up in Mississippi and other locations. So if you're interested in this more strategic level, you're also welcome to discuss. So um, I recommend you to reach out to us, uh, set up a call, and uh, we'll be happy to share both technology, partnership models, and our belief that knowledge is a human right, and we want to make it available, accessible, and affordable for everybody on the planet. Thank you so much for your time. Bye for now.